reviews, how-tos, and builds. He is the Redneck Computer Geek on YouTube. Hi guys, and welcome to the walk around on the go-kart build. This is the 18 horsepower, 5 speed with reverse go-kart that we built out of an LT1000 lawn tractor. And we're just going to do a walk around on it, answer some questions you guys have been posting to me on my Facebook page and on the Main Mud Mowers Facebook group. Just want to say thank you for all the support in this build, and we're going to keep improving on it and doing a couple of more things with it. As it sits right now, the build is fully functional. It runs. If you're interested in the wiring on this build, I'm actually producing a push-button start video for the opposed twin that's on this build, and you're welcome to take a look at that also. One of the things I'd like to address that I get told a lot on the first couple of videos that I produced out of this was that the machine was going to be top heavy. Now, the machine behind me is an LT2000, which has the same exact seat height and platform as the LT1. And as you can see, this is my height of the seat here and the significantly higher seat on the actual machine itself. And this is running stock tires that are actually slightly bigger than the ones that are on that machine. So as far as tippiness is concerned, it really isn't. I mean, I have to throw a significant amount of weight into it to be able to move it. So we're going to do a walk around and show you a little bit about the unit. At the end, uh, towards the end of this video, I'm going to lift the front end. We'll do an entire undercarriage shop for you so you can answer those questions also. All right, so the front axle is a 180 rotated LT1000 setup. Basically, I cut the top plate off where the engine would be and then welded it in place so that the area where your exhaust would normally go is towards the rear, which gives you a place for your steering shaft. Now, it's just a regular go-kart steering shaft, and I'll see if I can get a shot of that through here. This comes down, and the steering gear is actually still in place. I used the bottom knuckle out of the LT1000, and that goes to this arm, which pivots like this, going to the tie rods. So it does have individual tie rods on both sides, as you can see here. And these were off of Amazon. They're actually... The same kind you can buy on Northern Tool. I'm not impressed with these at all, and I thoroughly expect them to bend. They were not worth the $15. Save your money. So the next thing that I usually end up getting asked is which one of these is which. This is your brake. This is your clutch. And you'll understand why the clutch is located over here rather than the usual location. So as this comes forward, we pull the clutch. And as it comes forward, you can see the brake press back. Now the transmission in the back of this actually sits just like a regular uh, lawn tractor transmission would as far as its orientation. There's nothing that's changed as far as that's concerned. There's nothing that's really changed as far as the orientation of the motor is concerned. The only thing that's changed is that on an LT1000, if the engine was in the front, the clutch would have been over there. Because of the fact that I didn't want to have a bar going across the whole front of the machine, I set the clutch to this side so that it presses in on the belt. And you'll see that more when we get in underneath. Now, as far as the rest of the front is concerned, these are go-kart steering grips. Those are off of BMI cart. This is just a regular um, clutch handle for a moped. And I grabbed a clutch handle because they're, they seem to be a little bit stronger as far as the Amazon reviews are concerned. The problem is, is it doesn't have enough throw for where I ended up attaching on the engine in the back. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to change where it's connected to the opposed twin. But we'll cover that when we come around to the engine. So that just loops around and goes in underneath 
and then comes through the side along with the choke cable which comes in underneath and I've got that mounted right here so you pull up to choke you push down to release just like a generic setup like I said there's another video covering all the wiring so we're gonna leave that alone for now um, this is because when we were hitting bumps my boots were actually jumping out and ending up in that wedge there so in order to clear up the danger I made that which catches in underneath your boot and holds you in I am planning to make some sort of front skid type idea maybe something kinda like a rally cross type truck has or something along those lines but I do want to have some sort of front bumper I'm actually debating not putting a winch on the front I'm actually debating making this more utility vehicle and placing the winch across this back piece and maybe making some sort of like recovery vehicle type attachment so winch about here going across and then some sort of pivot type attachment coming out like this maybe because you've got a whole ton of weight on your rear you've got you sitting in the front with me at about 200 pounds should hold just about anything that you want to lift up within this small area especially if you kept it close to the rear the battery box is the battery box off the original LT1000 I've just got pieces welded in underneath the um, it just kind of sits down in and it's very solidly mounted uh, the gas tank I believe is off of an old Toro that was kicking around and solenoid which you'll see in the other video obviously and oh everybody keeps asking where the throttle is connected I ended up doing the throttle from this pivot here so that it pivots this right here see if I can move it like this and the tensioner spring that I installed is right here going back through and connecting down to the frame through that hole down there and that works pretty good um, the throttle response is definitely better I'll post a short little run clip at the end of this so you can hear it up and see what you think of it it is straight piped at the moment if you're familiar with another youtuber called Doc Sprocket he actually makes pipes for an opposed twin that he made them out of propane tanks like the small little Bunsen burner tanks and I really like that idea and I think that I may end up making a version of that but check out Doc Sprocket's channel he has an amazing couple of builds that definitely deserve some street cred on this type of stuff the top is open I will probably end up eventually putting a pull start in like they used to on the old 1970s type lawn tractors and stuff like that and that's a pretty simple mod a lot of people do used to be common you used to have that on every single lawn tractor back in like the 1970s but then people got stupid and lazy and had to have starters and the other side obviously running out through and as you can see it's leaking which means that my carb rebuild apparently still has some issues so we're gonna have to check that out and so now we're gonna move forward the seat is just a regular jeg seat nothing special just plain hard mounted onto it and I debated putting adjustment bars in until I realized that that was all I had for clearance to the engine anyway and that was all I had for clearance to the front so bend your knees or stay off of it and this is the shifter so forward is forward gears and back is reverse gears right now it's in neutral so reverse neutral one two three four oops four or five there we go so that's all right all the way to fifth and chunk it all the way back and then one forward neutral so there we go so at this point I'm gonna chunk it into reverse so I lock the rear end up 
and we're going to lift it up and take a look underneath. All right, so as you can see, it's really light on the front, which means when you hit bumps, it tends to jump up. So there's our connection there, and that comes up there and pivots up in this area. So that's actually up above where the axle is, so it keeps it good and protected and in a strong area. Now as we come down through, you'll see this link here. That goes back through to the clutch assembly. So the clutch, as it goes forward, pivots this out and releases the clutch. And this is, if you've seen my videos on the other tractors, this is actually the deck pulley, which used to be here, which has been flipped up and pressed on top of the uh, three and a half inch drive pulley. The rear pulley is yet again a deck pulley that I blew out this piece and then welded on top of a regular factory pulley. So it's basically a one to one ratio right now. And it's got a lot of belt slippage currently. I need to get into a belt that's probably about an inch or so smaller. So I don't really know what size this is. Ironically, it came off an old snowblower and just happened to be the right size. When I find out what size it is, for the heck of it, not that it matters to anybody, I'll post it in the description. So as you can see, this is the shifting rod coming back. That goes to this linkage right here, and there's my custom shifter. And what I ended up finding was that the original shifter came kind of more out into this direction. And in order to be able to do the press back shift, I had to put it over here. And here's my brake assembly. Yet again, it's just a regular LT1000 brake assembly that has a rod welded to it and it just presses back onto it like you normally would. When you come forward, this is actually the deck drop right here and that goes to your shifter on the outside. So right now, We've got something else actually showing up. I wonder what that possibly could be. Guess you guys better stay tuned to see what else is here.